Welcome to Friends. My name is Constance and this is Crazy Free Musings. Welcome back to my channel and to a Team Project Pan update. Team Project Pan is a collaborative project pan that was started by the girls at Beauty News, Kat and Haley. And they will be linked in the cards and down below. Uh, the concept is whatever full face project pan that you are already doing, you can just join the team project pan, start using the team project pan hashtag and um, carry on. So it's full face and it's rolling. So rolling means it always has the same number of items in it. When you hit your goal on something or use it up, then you replace it with um, something else from your collection that you also want to use up. The concept of a project pan is you have stuff in your collection that you're neglecting or that you want to get more use out of and so you put it into a project pan and you try to use it and make it look used or try to hit some goal. Use it up, hit pan, hit some weight goal, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a number of ways to track your progress for a project pan. Uh, most of mine are hit pan. And all right, I think that's it for the background of project pan. So let's get into it. All right, so this this is my um, body moisturizer that I've had in here since um, apparently February. It says uh, update two, maybe March. Maybe I introduced this in March. Um, so Jergens is not cruelty free. So I wanted to use it up for that reason. I also wanted to use it up because it's getting old. It's like two years old at this point two and a half. I mean, I've been cruelty free since the beginning of 2018 at this point. So this was bought before then. So this has to be at least like two and a half years old. So I just wanted to make sure that I used it up before it went bad. And I did, you can see that I was making pretty steady progress in the mid part of the year. And then this was my September update. And then in October, I used up a ton because I started using it on my body. And then in, um, in November, I used it up. So that's exciting. I will introduce something to replace this uh, at the end of the video. And in the meantime, that goes into my empties. All right, moving on. This is the foundation that I have had in my project pan since update three, which is probably April. Uh, this is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation in the color Swan. Um, and I really like the foundation and the finish. It's just that Swan is too dark and too yellow for me. So I have to mix it and they came out with a color that matches me better. So I bought that instead. And irony, I will have to darken that one a little bit. Um, but I have this foundation in another color that is at least the correct undertone to me. So I just have to darken it a little bit. I don't have to tone correct. Um, this has had no measurable progress for the last three months because it started getting cold and I started not wearing foundation. That's basically true. Like I've been wearing foundation the last couple of weeks again, but I haven't been, I have not been focusing on this at all, at all. I just haven't. So, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this 
when the project ends, I'm definitely not going to use it up. Like my best, my best month of progress was like here when it was the correct color for me. This was like, I don't know, I started marking it in August or something like that. So like August to September, I was able to use just like two pumps of this as my foundation. And I went through it decently quickly, but I don't use much foundation. I don't feel like I have a lot to cover. Like I'm perfectly fine with going foundation free, as I have mentioned many times before. So, um, yeah, the fate of this after the project is to be determined. I definitely won't use it up by the end of the year. Um, like, it's not bad. That's not, um, the, the formula is not starting to turn bad on me. Um, so I don't necessarily want to throw it out, but at the same time, I am using it at a snail's pace so it's not the most exciting thing to just have hanging around next up in the complexion arena is something that i introduced last month this is the becca under eye brightening corrector this is in this is just a deluxe sample size that came in one of the little sets that they love doing um it came with like an opal highlighter which I gave away because it was too dark and with a primer and this so like you probably know the set that I'm talking about but even if you don't that's they do this kind of set all the time so my goal was to hit pan and I did and yes I just dug straight down to the bottom of the container with a little brush and I am not ashamed I hit pan on it I do really like this. It's a really easy just like dab under my eyes and then like tap over it with my finger and like throw on mascara kind of look. Um, or if I want to cancel out my dark circles better, um, obviously I did not do this today, but I can uh, put it underneath my foundation or concealer to uh, cancel out the blueness before um, uh, you know before I I um, put on my foundation or my concealer. Um, but this is light enough that I can just put it on my under eyes and then blend it into my skin, and it will look normal. So I really like it. I travel with it frequently. I get a lot of use out of it and it looks decently used now, which was the goal. That one, I go back and forth on these, uh, whether I want to roll them out or not. I am going to roll this one out because I have some things, sp I have two specific things that I want to roll in. So we're doing that, you know, I'm, I'm rolling it out less because um, like I'm relieved to not be using it anymore because like I said, I love the product. It's more just that I have something that I want to focus my efforts on by rolling it into the pan. One, two, three. Okay. Um, next up, let's do color. This is my blush that has been in since the very beginning of the project. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Powder Blush in On The Mauve, and I have been using it faithfully. It shows up in most of my description boxes. I wear it most days. I did definitely convert me to using blush consistently. Um, I do feel like if if I'm wearing foundation or if I'm just feeling a little bleh, I have naturally high color in my cheeks. So adding a little bit of color once 
my skin has been blanked out or if I'm pale because I'm not feeling well, adding a little bit of blush is a great way to look alive again. So that's one of the main purposes of a project pan for me. I've put things in that aren't getting a lot of use and then either I decide that I don't like using that category of thing or I decide that I love using that category of thing and I start using it all the time. And blush was one of the latter. Um, this is my other um, uh, color cosmetic. Um, so this is the Cover Effects Custom Enhancer Drops in Moonlight. I introduced it in, let's see, October. September. Okay. So I introduced this in August. Then I used a bunch of it trying to figure out how I could get it to work. Um, I used this pretty faithfully as a highlighter in the month of August. And then by the end of August, I discovered that um, the color is too dark for me. Like it looks like a like a, a bronze, like a sh like I've put shiny bronzer on, especially if I bring it up here onto my forehead. And this is true at this point when I've lost all of the color that I acquired this summer. Um, this is especially true now well, while I am at my palest and I will be at my palest for, you know, the goal is for all time because sunscreen. Um, so yeah, um, I used up a decent amount of it while it was a decent color for me to use as a highlighter. And then I started realizing that it was, like it was always on the edge of too dark for me and I, um, you know, discovered that I needed to use a stipple brush to really buff out the edges so that it could blend into my skin. And then it started just like, like you could see it from head on where it would look like a stripe, even though it was blended really nicely. The edges, no, no harsh edges at all. It just shows up as a dark stripe on my skin. So I was like, okay, it's now a shiny bronzer. And, um... I used it um, a decent amount in October, having learned that um, this that it is basically a bronzer on me, a very very shiny bronzer. But then this month I have not used it at all. Like maybe one time, I think that the um, I think you can maybe see that, um, I mean, if my screen would focus on the bottle and not on my hand, you could see that there is like just a little bit where it's settled out underneath the, the line that I marked, but I have not used that very much. It's not close to being used up and I'm probably going to start using it as like a darkening drop for, you know, like make something a little bit darker and glowier. Um, you know, make, make a foundation a little bit darker and glowier because I do have a couple of foundations and concealers that are too light for me. And, um, and then a couple also that are too matte. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to start using that as a mix-in and we'll see if I can get some progress on it in the month of December. Maybe. It could happen. It might not, but it could. All right, now we're moving on to things that I have marked on my sheet of paper, so momentito. 
let's start with this one. This is the ColourPop uh, Creme Gel Eyeliner from like, this is like three years old now. And this is the color Fast Lane. And I have not used very much of it. First of all, okay, so I've, I've proven that this is a true mark. Let me see. Let me roll that down. Urgh. Okay. So let me show you the paper and hide. Okay. So this is Fast Lane. This is where I started. This was my first month of progress when I was um, also using Call Me. And then I didn't mark it last month in October. So this month's progress is actually two months of progress. Now, I didn't use it basically at all in October. Um, I'm pretty sure that it was just lined up with the previous mark. But I did make an effort to use it a decent amount in um, in November. I don't love it. It's really dry. Like it's a super dry formula. It doesn't stay on my eyes. My eyes, my eyelids are super oily. Um, if something creases at all, it'll crease on me. Um, like I've had mats that normally like stay put, just like gather in the folds of my eyelids. And that's, it's just, there's just like a bunch of, um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of ways that it doesn't really work with um, my eyelids. Um, it's a color that I don't use a ton of. It's a black and teal. And if it were like a true green, I feel like I would use it more. Um, I got the color to be a waterline color. It doesn't transfer into my waterline at all. I know that they recently reformulated the creme gel liners. I doubt that I'm going to pick them up because my experience with the prior formulation of the creme gel liners is that they don't transfer onto my waterline. They're pretty dry and difficult to get onto my oily eyelids, you know, and then they don't stay put. And so this one, this one might end up going goodbye. We'll see. We'll see how I feel maybe in January. Next up, this is the Wet n' Wild Ultimate Brow Highlighter. Um, Wet n' Wild um, lied about, no, guys, we're totally not in China, and then we're definitely proven to be selling in China. And one, I don't like that they decided to try and hide it. And number two, um, I don't trust either PETA or the Chinese government as organizations to not test wet and wild on animals, given that it's sold in China. And this is a thing that happens in China still, nowhere else in the world, but in China, it still happens. So wet and wild is not cruelty free in my personal definition of cruelty free. So I decided that I was going to try and use this up. I was like, let's set the goal of trying to obliterate that little bunny by sharpening it. Do you see how we're not close at all to the bunny? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you may remember if, uh, if you were keeping up that I said in my October update that, um, I stopped using it because it's, um, it rubs off on my contacts. Well, I have used it a tiny, tiny bit, like barely enough to mark. I'm going to leave it in the project. There's nothing in particular that I want to pen right now. Um, but this one, 
I will definitely chuck because I have no use for it other than being, um, oh, I didn't say, I use this as an inner rim um, brightener if I am wearing like pink shadows or my eyes are bloodshot and I just want some kind of brightness in my inner room to make me look more awake and not like I have pink eye. Um, so it works okay, but I have discovered that it doesn't last and if I'm wearing contacts, it'll fuzz up my contacts. So this is not on my list of approved items anymore and it will get chucked at the end of the year, regardless of how much progress I've made on it or not. All right, the last thing that is being measured, this is the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Faded. And I use, um, so that's this month's mark. Um, I have mentioned that um, a lot of ColourPop things have come in and passed through this project because I find that ColourPop things tend not to have a great shelf life. The Lippy Pencils are a great example of this. Most of them separate from the packaging and fall. They like don't stay put in the packaging and then they... Um, you know, they get loose and then they're difficult to use. Um, this has not separated from the packaging. It's a nice um, orange color that is, you know, it's, it's like an orangey nude. It's, um, it's pretty close to my natural lip color. I like using it for a bit of definition and then throwing a gloss or my sunscreen lip balm over the top. It's really great actually to provide some definition to my lips because I use for preference mineral, not just a lip balm, but mineral sunscreen in general because I, I just find that it works better for me. And also, I am so pale that a white cast doesn't affect the color of my skin. Like, I have a white cast on my neck right now. Can you tell? No, you cannot, because I am that pale. So, um, joys of being super pale, I can wear a mineral sunscreen and it is no factor. Um, so, yeah. Um, the mineral sunscreen lip balm that I use tends to blank out the color of my lips because it is mineral, it has a white cast. So I use this to add a little bit of color back to my lips because like my cheeks, my lips are highly pigmented. It looks weird if I have no color in my lips at all. So um, this has been getting less use since I added another lip color to my project pan, but um, I do still use it occasionally. The, the lip colors do not actually turn out to pair very well. So it goes. Um, this is the lip color that I added, but um, I didn't have a particular goal on this. I just wanted to get good use on it before it expired because I have found that the Libby pencils in particular have zero shelf life, like six months of shelf life. And this one is two years old. It's still going strong, but it's a great color and I want to use it and make sure that I get good use out of it. So there we are. This is the use of a project pan. And then this is my last item in the project pan, this is the ColourPop Ultra Satin Liquid Lipstick in Catching Feels. I have found that the Ultra Satin lipsticks um, go bad quite quickly in my last empties. I mentioned that I had to pitch Echo Park because it was um, 
you know, because it was starting to smell like Play-Doh. It didn't smell like Play-Doh before, and then it did, and that means it's gone bad. So I wanted to get use out of this color. It's the color that I'm wearing today. Um, and this is like my comfort zone for lips. It's so interesting how I'm like the opposite for comfort zone for the most people, I feel like. Like I've had so many people say like, were you scared to cut off all of your hair? And I was like, no, I like my hair this length. It's my favorite length. I don't have to do anything extra to it. I just wash it occasionally and then I put some stuff in it to make it have more body and grit right after I've washed it because it's very fine and silky and then I just like don't wash it for a week and it's great. That's like, this is, this is low maintenance hair. Um, and then occasionally I'll curl it if I want to go all out. So like in a similar vein, this uh, depth of lip is very normal for me. Like vampy, bold, bright. Yeah, I like it all. Is it is it a bold lip color? I like it. Um, I can't really show you any progress on this. I haven't used it enough to start scraping the sides. The wand is definitely still coming out loaded with lots of lipstick. So, um, I am using it. I've used it probably half of the days this month. I have discovered that it has a slight tendency to crawl outside my lip line, uh, which is unusual for the Ultra Satin Lipstick. Um, and I do have um, a dark brown lip liner that I'm keeping at work right now in case, you know, for, for security. If I notice that it's starting to feather a little bit, I can throw on my lip liner and then, you know, clean up around the edges of my lip line and, um, and then reapply this to blend it all together. Um, but yeah, I like this color. It's kind of, uh, well, like it's showing up as a, a sort of terracotta, like burnt red. In real life, I would I would consider this like a red brown. It's it's a really nice uh, brownish red. Uh, it's dark. Um, I wouldn't consider it terracotta. I think I would consider it more in the in the ox oxblood uh, vein vibe. It's like almost a burgundy, but it's not quite purple enough. I like this color. It's a nice dark red. It's pretty. And this is the kind of color that I like wearing. So let me pick it up off the floor. All right, so that those are all of my products updated and how I'm feeling about them. And let's add in the couple of things that I wanted to roll in to replace things that I have hit my goal on. First up is the companion to this thing. This is the deluxe size of the Becca First Light Priming Filter. Um, this is, I got it in that same sample set. Um, this is a nice, like, moisturizing, semi-glowy primer. Um, Bear has commented that my skin looks really dry with foundation on right now, so it's bad if husband is noticing that my skin is looking really dry. So I figured add a glowy primer to the... Um, to the pan and let's see if 
um, if maybe that helps it look more like my normal skin without um, you know, without foundation on. I don't know how it happens because I lean so hard on the natural to glowy finish. So like all of my foundations are natural finish or glowy finish. None of them are matte, but somehow all of them put directly over my sunscreen look like super flat matte. I have, yesterday, when he made this comment, I was wearing the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. Luminous. So I thought that a, um, a glowy primer might be in order. So that is why I'm rolling this in. I have used it a decent amount. I'm not sure how much actually came in the sample size. Um, but it also has a shelf life, you know, recommended shelf life of 12 months. And I've had it for a while, so I might as well roll it in, get some use out of it. Uh, get my, you know, when I'm, when I'm wearing foundation because I want to use up some foundations. You know, have, uh, you know, something to help it along. So, uh. My starting mark is there, and I will be using that for the next month and probably, probably using it up. I expect I will be able to use that up in the next month because um, I have not used it very much, but that is the level that it has been used to. And then the other thing that I'm rolling in is a Jelly Mutt Shadow. This is in collaboration with Disney Villains. Um, so these have been out long enough to get the word that they dry out real fast. And they do dry out real fast. This is the shade Just Your Voice. I got the Ursula collection because Ursula, uh, her song, um, Poor Unfortunate Souls is my favorite song in The Little Mermaid. Unfortunately, my voice is not particularly suited to it. I could sing it in a different key. But yeah, so this is a super sparkly shadow with an insane reflect. I am wearing it today. So you can see, it's very pretty on the eyes. I find that I have to use a glitter glue with it. I had to use a glitter glue with it even when it was fresh and like fully jelly-like. Now I have to like really rub on the um, on the surface to get up, um, you know, to get some pigment. But then it does still come off and it does still apply nicely. I just want to get some use out of this very pretty shadow. Like it's technically blue, but it has such a nice green shift and it's like almost purple that I think that I will be able to make it work and it's so pretty and I don't want my, my poor unfortunate souls reference jelly much eyeshadow just your voice to go bad without me getting real use out of it. So I figured I would throw it into the last month of this project and then I will roll it into the project that I'm starting in January as well. So jelly much. Last thing in my project pan. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed or learn something, or both. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like, and goodbye for now.